Are you sure? Okay. Oh, of course. <laughs> I can't concentrate. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, now we're going to start a new uh, series of videos. They're very short videos. However, in every video we discuss a certain technique of how to make your image more filmic. At the same time, there will always be a lot that you can download. You can find it in the description below that will give you the look that we worked on on this particular episode. Okay, I get this question a lot. If there is one thing I would do to make the image look more filmic, what would it be? If I just had to work very fast, do just one thing and the image uh, can become more filmic, what is it exactly? I really believe that the first thing you should be doing is working on your blue channel, limiting the dynamic range of your blue channel and just adding more blue to shadows and taking blue out of highlights usually gives you a more filmic look automatically. Let's take a look at this. I have this image here and you can see my channels are balanced. Now, I'm just going to work now in two different ways. I'm just going to come uh, here to primaries bars and simply I'm just going to come to the blue channel in the highlights and bring it down and the image looks a bit better. So now take a look here. I just got the blue channel to be lower than the other channels. Then I'm going to come to blue here in the in lift or in shadows and I'm simply going to push blue up. Notice this is what happened now. I just added more blue to shadows and I took some of the blue out of highlights making it more yellow essentially. So this is all what we did. I didn't do anything now. Now take a look at the image before and after. This is before and this is after. You can see how there's a huge difference here simply by one adjustment. Let's try the same technique with this image here. I'm just going to balance the image really fast. So just making it look a bit better. And then I'm going to add a new node. And in the new node, I'm going to be repeating the same thing. I'm going to be bringing the blue and the highlights down and pushing the blue in shadows up. and the image instantly looks much better. Take a look at the original image before this adjustment and after the adjustment. Let's now try it in a different way. I'm going to reset all grades and nodes, come back to this shot, reset all grades and nodes, and I have the blue channel here in my curves. Now, I'm again going to repeat the same thing. I'm just going to bring the uh, highlights down, in blue of course, and I'm just going to bring the blue up. Again, the same thing. The image looks more filmic. Take a look at the original image and the new one. Now, this is one way to do it. I'm just going to uh, reset all grades and nodes one more time. Now, notice that when I decided to control my curve here, I controlled it from the upper and lower points. I can also add an inverted S curve to this shape. So, instead of uh, bringing the highlights from the point here, I'm just going to bring it here like this, and I'm just going to bring the shadows up this way. Now, this is a more subtle effect, okay, but it's still another way of achieving the same look. It's just going to be a bit more subtle because we're not going to be affecting the extreme highlights here. Notice that in this technique, the highest point here in the blue channel is still in its place. Now, there is one problem with this technique. When you add blue to shadows, you're essentially making shadows more saturated. And we discussed before that this is not something you want to do. You always want your extreme shadows to have as less saturation as possible. So, after adding this, I'm just going to add a new node. And in the new node, I'm going simply to go to uh, Luma versus Saturation, bring the shadows down, and I'm just going to bring it up again in the mid here. So essentially, I'm only making the extreme shadows without saturation, but we're going to have saturation in the other areas of shadows. So we have saturation in shadows, just not as saturated as before. Now, this is a fast and easy technique. And simply by clicking on the link in the description, you can download the LUT that gives you these looks. Because you know, in some environments, like if you're working with Premiere or with other environments, it might not be as easy uh, to do to desaturate your shadows. Uh, so here you can have it really fast. Thank you. Please hit to learncolorgrading.com to learn more about color grading and uh, hit. Okay, frankly, I'm just unable to concentrate. She, when, whenever she sees me recording, she just likes to take control. Okay, just please go to learn color grading and to uh, learn color grading.com and filmsimplified.com to learn more about color grading.